Okay, so now we have our bracer. We're ready to get it wet and do our final forming. So the first thing we do is we get it nice and soaked in so that everything can hold its shape the way we want. And the trick to bracers is when you're trying to match the form, it doesn't have to um, mimic your forearm exactly. Uh, although it would be nice because it's really pliable, it's going to be able to move one way or the other. So if you were to be worried about um, you know, the geometry of your wrist relative to the geometry of your forearm, just know that you're sort of a tapered tube and we've, we've done a good job of mirroring that. Um, so there's a couple of things you can do to accommodate that form. You can have pre-made shapes that you're going to wrap it around. You can um, use rubber bands, which is always good. Um, you can also incorporate other forms, and we're going to cover that. So if you start out with rubber bands, that's okay. Um, you can just wrap it around. Just know that you're going to end up with a shape that's not necessarily uh, your desired form. Right? So if we've wrapped our material with rubber bands, this is not the wrist shape we want. What we want is actually closer to this shape. And so depending on how you lay that out, um, the rubber bands work fine, but you may need just some dead weight to hold it in this profile. You may want to take your wood block and sort of wedge it in where you know your forearm is going to be a certain width. Uh, one thing I know I want is I want this material to be flared out on the lip. And so what we need to do is make sure to take the time and start to set the memory of the leather to the geometry we're imagining. So you can do this with a burnisher, you can do this with your hands. What I generally do is get that section wet. And I'll just roll it with my hands okay and this isn't just wet on the outside it's wet on the inside too so you got to make sure with your sponge that you take the time and wet the interior and the exterior and that's going to make your vegetable tan leather much more compliant and it's going to be easier for you to move it around so as much as i want to just say oh i get it wet i wrap it in the form i'm done it's really important to take the time and get those details that you're worried about addressed very early in the shape. Um, because unless you have a spare copy of your arm laying around, it's really hard to just walk around while wearing this thing in place while it dries. Okay. You could do it. I'm sure people would ask, you know, why do you have this piece of leather rubber banded to your arm? In fact, let's just cover that for a moment so you can see what I'm talking about. So right now this radius is to allow my wrist to get full extension and full flexion, right? I can move up and down, I can roll my wrist. But you don't really want to go to the grocery store like wrapped up in rubber bands and leather. Maybe you do, just, just for the reaction, I'm sure. I'm sure someone out there would find it entertaining, but it's just sort of a strange thing to do all day to walk around with this. Okay. And wet leather kind of smells funky, but this is, you know, sort of the wear we're looking for. So once it's on your arm, you're asking yourself, can I really bend my wrist? Can I really move my arm? And we're trying to get these shapes to accommodate that and it requires a really hard roll right this bend is a really hard bend so every time I'm doing this you can see water moving out of the leather and that tells me that the leather isn't wet enough to accommodate that form but you can see in terms of fit if we were to have this laced up this rubber band is not being cooperative if this were to be laced up I would still be able to wear it as comfortably as I chose to, okay? So, that's what we have for the interior, that's what we have for the exterior. And I'm just going to continue to work this wrist section with water and bend it until I'm satisfied with the way it wears.
And again, that's going to allow me to move my wrist. Now, this is important. I can't stress that enough because at some point you're going to need to do something like when you fall and catch yourself or if you're trying to push something and you really don't want to jam into the back of your hand. There's a whole bunch of tendons and bones there. There's not a lot of padding. So once you get to that point, you're going to ask yourself, what can I do to give my arm, my wrist, a little more room to move while I'm still wearing this arm? So that's our pre-shape. You can see what I'm talking about. We're just going to jam that wood block back in there. It's a good mimic of our forearm. Um, you don't have to use the rubber bands. I like using the tape. The tape works really well. Uh, I like the tape because you can change the diameter at which uh, your leather is going to expand. It's kind of tricky, you know. I'll just set it on the table and then I'll lay it backwards onto itself and then say, okay, this is, this is the shape I'm looking for for my forearm width, or I want it to be just a little wider, and I find the rubber band is limiting that. I'll say, okay, this looks good, and then I'll just pull the tape up onto itself, and that's going to limit the amount that this section of leather can open. And that's really nice, because then all of a sudden you can start to go, okay, well, I want to bend it this way, I want to fold it this way, but I know that the circumference of my forearm is roughly this dimension. So when I do the circumference of my wrist, it's the same process where you take the tape. And I like the tape because it kind of holds your armor to the table. So, you know, if you only have you and, and just your hands to work, that can be a little interesting if you haven't thought about it. So the tape acts as like a smart second set of hands, but it is sticky. So there we go. Now we have a smaller wrist. We have a wider forearm. We're trying to flatten the component a little more. Um, I have these rectangular wrists, so we're just going to put that wood block up into the wrist section. And then all we're trying to do on the end of this is just make sure that one, the tape stays fixed, and two, the wrist section can actually flare open, right? So once you've got it all taped up that way, Just wrap it again on the outside so it's no longer sticking to me, like so. And then, in order to force the wrist into some form of extension, right, we want to put pressure on it, like so, so that we know it's rolling back. So we've got our wrist sticking up and out. That is the easiest way to tape everything together and let it dry.